going on, guys? Welcome to the Gentleman's Driving Club podcast. This week, Brody and Billy are back, and we also have Devin on the podcast today. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. How are you, Sean? Doing well, doing well. It's been a few weeks since we have both of you guys on, so I'm definitely happy to see both of y'all. Yeah. Good to be back, Billy. We're all busy, so uh, yeah, back to it, back to the weekly podcast. There we go, there we go. Um, so what's the, any update on the cards? Anything new going on with you guys? What do you got? I am going to attempt to spray paint the Porsche wheels this weekend. Okay, okay. Yeah. Should you go spray paint or uh, Plasti Dip or what you doing? I'm going to go straight to spray paint. I don't like – the Plasti Dip just peels off too easily if you don't get, like, 50 coats on it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, okay, I don't Brody, like anything new for you? Uh, FJ space is sat in the garage, but the Raptor did go off-roading. So basically we took a 95 inch wide Ford Raptor up <laughs> some real nice and tight forest trails here in Colorado. So, uh, nice. that video is going to be coming out very soon. Um, uh, didn't do too bad. The only issue we had is we did slash one sidewall. Uh, right. so with the loss of one tire, that was all we had. So still did great. Good thing you have five spares. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. And we've got Devin on today. Uh, Devin is red. Red Stang underscore 3.7 on Instagram. Devin, how you doing today? Yeah. Good, how are you? Doing well. How's the Mustang doing? Doing good. Doing good. Any new modifications recently? I'm trying to think. I think I did something. Weird. No, I don't think so. Just the Euros, putting Euros on there. Okay. Okay, so for those of you guys who don't know who Devin is, uh, Devin has been one of our most loyal GDC drivers for the longest time. He's also a picture that you had taken of you in your car uh, with the Legacy T. It was actually one of our our most popular uh, picture ads ever. So thank you, Devin, for the great picture. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's, he's continuing to show support to the brand, so we definitely want to Get back to him so you guys go follow him on Instagram. Um, have you been watching the podcast, Devin? Yeah, I've been watching. The, I watched the last one and then the one with uh, Giro okay. Champ. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Devin. Well, just, uh, just another V6 Mustang. <laughs> My V6 Mustang. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the first thing we got on the agenda today is the Hyundai Velocitor. What do you guys think about this vehicle? I kind of I sent you guys the article on this. I'm gonna try to screen share it for you guys as well. But this thing has been. Let's see. Can you guys see my screen share or no? No. All you did was just kind of <clears throat> enlarge your screen. Okay. Oh, there it is. Well, the audience should, should be able to see it, but uh, I've got it pulled up. The Hyundai turns the Veloster into crazy off-roader with grappler concept. So when I first saw this vehicle, I was like, man, you know, that's not really the vehicle for me, but it looks pretty sick. What did you guys think? Oh, I think it's awesome. I, I'm a huge fan of turning these little cars into these off-road beasts. It's, it's very comical to me. I think it's it would be hilarious to see that on a trail behind a Jeep or an FJ mobbing through all these mountains and hills and whatnot, keeping up with them. Yeah. Brody, what were you talking about? I can't see it over here. What's that? I can't see it over here. You're off to the sky. I haven't heard of it. Yeah, so they're calling they're calling this thing uh, the Veloster Grappler concept. If you can pull that up on your phone or pull it up on your laptop or whatever you're on. That thing is, it, it's basically a rally, it's kind of like a rally car. Uh, Which in addition, it is going to be a 2019 SEMA car, so. That is that is correct. Are you going to SEMA this year, Brody? I am not going this year. No. So, um, company we went last year, we we're kind of on a different kind of schedule right now, so I'm not sure if we're going at all. Um, more than likely, maybe going next year again, unless I can get our shop going up a little more better. So, yeah. um, if that does take off, then we'll all go. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. But it will be at SEMA 2019 in Las Vegas. 
Um, and it, you know, it's it's decked out with all the light bars, you know, um, the rally lights, the cage, all that good stuff, and definitely the tires to to uh, make it worthy. It looks like they they definitely have some kind of fender flares going on with it as well to make sure that those fat tires are able to come under it. Um, Which I like. I think it's a really cool little concept. Um, for me personally, I don't see it as a SEMA build, but, um, you know, there's there. there's these shops that can build these custom crazy kits going on. I mean, we had the Mini Cooper Rally kind of race car in here for a while uh, with the intentions of building that, doing like a little Baja race truck, uh-huh. um, which I bought the Raptor. So um, there's a lot of crazy builds out there, which, like Billy said, I do enjoy the atypical um, off-road rally kind of setups or as some of the people who don't care about the sport would say like, you know, apocalypse builds or anything like that. Sure. Absolutely. Um, the next bit of news I wanted to go over is we were talking about it um, a few weeks ago about the 2020 Corvette and getting numbers on it. We didn't really have the numbers. We had the looks of the vehicle. We had, you know, the exhaust, we had videos and stuff like that, but we didn't have any solid numbers. And now we're getting worried that it's going to be able to go 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. Um, and then equally as impressive, it covered the quarter mile in just 11.2 seconds at 122 miles per hour. Bone stop. That's that's cooking. That's moving. I mean, at, at, you know, 0 to 60, 2.8 seconds, that's definitely up there with basically any other performance production car. Quarter mile in 11.2 seconds. I'm not super impressed with that, but it being stock, you know, once it gets tuned, once it has headers, that kind of thing, some weight reduction, I think you can knock that quarter mile time way down. But for 60 grand, that's not bad. No. That's that's keeping up with Tesla numbers for the 0 to 60 times. What what do you what are you thinking on that, Devin? I think that's I like that zero to sixty time right there. That's that's cooking. It's going pretty good. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's a time that's respectful. And like you said, the key phrase that you mentioned in the whole entire sentence was stock. So this is a car that um, you're basically getting that is already putting down impressive times. That it, it seems like the manufacturers kind of game these days, where they basically put these cars out that are they're turnkey, um, you know, turnkey performance cars, but they're like. Just do it. You know, it's kind of giving right. you that um, that desire to want the next step. Like the Supra. Okay, the Supra came out and, you know, people were kind of like, okay, it's a little bit disappointing. Except they built it so that it can accept more power, accept a lot of modifications, exhaust, like that's to boost those numbers to increase right. those 0 60 times and those quarter miles. So really cool platform. I'm excited to see them. Absolutely. And like you said, you know, they're coming from the factory more – uh, complete, as we say, performance-wise and look-wise. We saw the Mazda we talked about a few weeks ago. Then you've got stuff like this Hyundai we just talked about. And then, obviously, you've got the Corvette, 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. But, obviously, for car guys like us, that's never going to be enough. You know, you're going to have Street Suite 717. You're going to have all these guys on YouTube doing all kinds of crazy modifications to it. Um, I'll be surprised to see what kind of numbers people can put down. I'm just thinking like seeing what others have done in the past with the C7 as far as, you know, headers, intake, uh, tune, even E85 conversion, like how how much faster can this car get? You know, what what, what are we talking yeah. about here? Zero to 60 in 2.4 seconds? Do you think they could shave that much off? You know what I mean? It's kind of like how low can you really go? <laughs> And I agree. I mean, you're talking about a Corvette platform with the, with the uh, you know, the rear engine design or the mid-engine. What do you call it? Mid-engine? Right. mid-engine. Yeah. So mid-engine design, we're basically talking, you know, the weight ratio that's ideal for, um, you know, putting down impressive times and all that stuff. So you're basically going to keep traction on all four wheels. Um, yeah, I mean, really, if you can put the power down, you can keep it on the ground. The sky's the limit from there. Yep. And these, yeah. you know, I, I watch a lot of 13-point video, or I did in the past, and you always see that the vets usually end up on top, like some way or another, like the vets usually, even if they're, you know, 200 horsepower or less, a lot of times they just end up on top. And I think that's how this vehicle is going to be too. When you see it going up against McLaren's and you see it going up against Lamborghini's and, and, you know, those supercars, I think it's really going to stand a a solid chance. Well, like you just said, the big thing with the Corvette um, is that even though it really is kind of, 
I forget. It, it's it's more of a hyper car, not a hyper car, but more of a supercar platform than any other really car um, on the American market. Because I mean, Mustangs, Camaros, Challengers, all that stuff. Yeah, but they're really like a more muscle car platform. They're not very aerodynamic. Whereas the Corvette, with every year, it doesn't even really matter what year you're talking about. Um, it's an aerodynamic car that is very comparable in appearance. Yep. to some of these supercars, which I know I'll get hate for that because I know people will be like, oh, my McLaren looks like nothing else. <laughs> but realistically, we're talking about a car. They're, they're similar, similar. That's all yep. I got to say. Yeah, it's it's awesome to see that we're actually getting some American-made supercars out there, like the GT40 uh, Corvette coming out of the C8. It, it's cool to see actual American-made cars. Right. Keeping up with all the the Germans and all of those fancy million dollar uh, research and development teams and all that racing uh, heritage behind everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Devin, any thoughts on that before we move on to the next topic? You kind of took it. It's like they're comparing it to the Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> We're starting to get these American cars going up towards it so definitely the gt and the uh, c8 will be going at it if they keep going with like the chevy and ford rivalry rivalry then we'll get those up to like hypercar levels in the future right right and uh, it, go ahead real quick just to piggyback off of that kind of like another question i want to see what you guys think do you guys consider the C8 Corvette and the Ford GT in the same that class? Really or is the Ford GT on a different pedestal? I, I think that you're going to, as this generation of Corvette kind of matures, I think time will tell. And um, you're going to have to kind of uh, look at it and really debate it, you know, because – it does, to be honest, it does look a lot like a Ford GT. It does look a lot like a supercar. And as we get people who get their hands on these vehicles and we start seeing some more lap times and performance times, we're going to have to ask that question. I think the numbers on uh, the paper yeah. definitely make it seem like it's on the same level as the GT40. Yeah, and, and when you think about it, Corvette has always been – you know, I would say comparable to that to that Ford GT um, oh, level like because yeah. you know Ford got their Mustang, Chevy's got the Camaro. Those are the two competitors. Right. Corvettes are not competing with Mustang. I mean, to some degree, you know, but um, it's always been a Camaro versus Mustang type of thing. And Corvettes always kind of been that 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 big brother who's like, yeah, well, I'm better than both of you. But but real quick, yeah. let's throw an addition. Dodge Viper, even though they're not in production right now, Dodge Viper, I feel like, is more comparable to the Corvette than the GT. Okay. okay. I, I agree. I, I except, would say that ACR. Except yeah. the ACR. I think that's on a different pedestal. I saw that ACR today, actually. At, oh, really? Yeah. At a Dodge dealer. It was in a uh, It was in a trailer. They had it in a trailer. They were about to pull it out. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yep. Yep. Which um, kind of brings me to a later topic. Um, I guess we can go over it now. Uh, so the Audi needs about four thousand dollars worth of work. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait, what? what happened? <laughs> so, really, I mean, it's like a thousand dollars in parts, but three grand in labor. You know how they screw you with labor. But give me—I'm gonna grab the list. Give me a sec. Okay. Oh, let's see. Yeah, so I got, it took him a week to actually like diagnose the thing and figure out everything that was wrong with it. And then, let's see. Okay, so the valve cover gasket needs replaced. Okay. The timing cover gasket needs replaced. Okay. Water pump needs replaced. Okay. And the turbocharger oil lines need replaced. 
Sean, you know, okay. you know it's cheaper than $3,000 of labor at Audi? Taking a temporary of Billy. <laughs> yeah, coming up here or having us come down there. All I got to say is, Sean, that's easy. That's a lot of money for – there's – that is a very simple procedure. They're, I mean, they're screwing you on the, that, on the labor. I'm sorry on the three, or the three thousand dollars of labor. Yeah, but I mean, for example, that's a four cylinder, correct? Yeah. I've pulled apart four cylinder BMWs. Yeah. Gotten down to the point, pulling the complete. I, I've pulled the entire motor out okay. in less than six hours. Okay, which that was that was the first time I've ever done. It. All right. Um, Realistically, Sean, that's maybe what? What do you think? Three hours of labor max to actually pull everything apart, get the new gaskets in, and then reassemble. Yeah, I would say maybe six hours in case you gotta give some leeway to you always run into problems. But <laughs> I just think realistically, if you were to look elsewhere for a, another quote, right? I would probably go that route because oh, yeah. that's that's steep. That's very steep. I know Audis are expensive and all, but, but both, yeah, gaskets aren't that hard yeah and a motor is a motor for the again people are gonna hate me on that one but for a four cylinder motor they're base they're very similar yeah. in all honesty it's hard to change a subaru um valve gaskets and all that kind of stuff <laughs> okay. compared to the apps okay well you trying to fly down to houston or what i think i might have That's to take true. a trip <laughs> <laughs> well we could talk about that a little bit after the show but yeah so that, that thing's got some problems <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna figure that that out on Monday. Um, Sounds good. But the next bit of news: the Aston Martin DBS, customized by Daniel Craig, makes 2019 Neiman Marcus catalog. This thing looks beautiful. Did I did I send this to you? Yeah, we saw it. It looks yeah. real nice. Is, is we'll the super? La, how do you pronounce that? Super Laga? Super Lagra. This thing. Yeah, it's it's sweet. Did did you see the the price point on it? Yeah, seven hundred thousand and seven dollars, and they did. That's awesome. <laughs> That's super, hilarious. The super Lagera. Right. Yes. It, it comes with a watch and movie tickets. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so so you get yourself your uh, shoot. What kind of that you get yourself an Omega watch, which is what James Bond always wears is Omega, and then you get the movie tickets to the new movie, which. They really haven't been talking a lot about. I saw the trailer, and the yeah, trailer I, didn't, I actually horrible. didn't know it was coming out. The trailer was terrible. Really? Yeah, it was awful. Um, I'm obviously still going to watch the movie, and I pray that it's good. But trailer was just terrible. But anyway, so for seven hundred thousand dollars, you get the Omega watch, you get the car, and movie tickets to the new movie but it comes equipped with a 715 horsepower twin turbocharged 5.2 liter v12 engine that's that's crazy that's absurd if you guys got the money are you are you dropping it on this whip or what so i'm definitely willing to spend seven hundred thousand on going to a movie and it comes because it comes free you get a free car oh my gosh win-win man i do that every weekend but i don't get a free yeah. car i mean uh oh. David. <laughs> so I mean it's a it's a pretty badass. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we hear you okay. now. Um I'm a huge James Bond fan, as you guys know, but we're not dropping seven hundred. <laughs> do, do you know what Daniel Craig ha deal he has with Ashton Martin? No. So he can go into any Ashton Martin and Pick out a car he wants because he gets free S Martin cars for life because he's James Bond. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> um, I'm hoping I'm hoping this movie's good. You know, um, in the past, Daniel Craig had said he'd rather slit his wrist than do another Bond movie, but I'm assuming that they gave him a fat check because he's doing. Let <laughs> <laughs> <And> he talked. <laughs> um, yeah, I, th I thought that was super interesting. Um, if you guys haven't checked out the Garrow Champ interview uh, from last week, definitely go check it out on YouTube. We'll leave that link in the description. Um, also, if you guys are fans of his, we have his merch on gentlemansdrivingclub.com. We also just added backpacks, socks, all kinds of fun stuff to the website. Uh, so definitely go ahead and check that out. The Patreon group is growing slowly but surely. 
uh, it's growing and I'm super excited about that. We'll leave that link in the description, but basically that's where we kind of continue the podcast, continue the talk, uh, help each other out with builds, uh, trade parts, vehicles, that kind of stuff and whatnot. Really cool community there. So definitely check that out. Um, what is going on in the Springs, guys? Because down here in Houston, it's all baseball right now. The Astros are kicking the Yankees' butt, and uh, we're loving it. <laughs> all we got here is a really crappy football team. Oh, God. And, uh, let's not, let's not talk about that. People are looking forward to <laughs> hockey getting going and the avalanche taking off. So that's about it, sport wise. Um, other than that, it's starting to get chilly. It snowed last week, so we got a little couple inches with super, that one. Super icy. Super yep. icy. It was. Um, lots of accidents. Lots of accidents. Raptor did just fine. Porsche? Not so much. Ooh. But there was a summer tire uh, meetup down in one of the ditches off of I-25. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so other than that, um, you know, trying to continue to modify the cars, make them better than they were before. And Billy and I are getting – it's going to sound very nerdy. We're getting – we're starting to, <laughs> we're starting to like these Traxxas RC cars a lot. Right. So – uh, geeking out about them. Put them on the channel, man. It's, 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 hey, it's fun because you can race these damn things on the road and all that stuff, but it's a lot cheaper to fix them when you blow a motor than when you blow a motor or something else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was sending mine 20 feet up in the air yeah. and landing on the freaking roof and to just turn it right back over and Billy, get going. Is that, is that Porsche all-wheel drive? Okay. Yes, it is. And it has locking diffs. Very cool. Which I got to figure out. They, they word stuff differently in the Porsche, so I got to do some research yeah. on them. So if anybody owns a Porsche Cayenne and knows about their all-wheel drive system, let me know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, short podcast today. I just kind of wanted to get get on here, get some content going, um, get Brody and Billy back on here. Talk to Devin for a minute and, um, you know, go over the news of what we've heard this week and kind of give everybody updates on the Audi, give everybody updates on all the vehicles. Um, any other topics you guys would like to talk about before we hop on out of here? What do you got, anything? I'm still still flirting with the idea to make the Porsche off-road capability. Maybe not going too crazy like Brody does, uh-huh. but... Maybe just a little weekend warrior up to a camping spot type off-road build. Okay. Okay. I say go all out, man. Okay. I go all out. It's a lot more expensive to buy Porsche parts than Ford parts or Toyota parts. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> and I have been toying around with the idea of possibly doing another daily or something that is uh, – you know, car because the last week the last car I had was the uh, the FRS until I sold that one. So, yeah. um, been toying around with ideas of like you know the Ford Focus RSs and all that stuff, yeah. but um, I don't know exactly. I don't know if what I like to do. It's nice driving the Raptor around just because it's so big. The FJ, you know, keep a few miles off of that guy there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, like Billy's talked about with the Porsche, the uh, the Raptor drinks that gas oh, God. with a uh, thirty six gallon right. tank. It costs it. On 91, it'll cost me about $150 to fill that thing up, and it'll last about – it'll last a week. Maybe. Wow. <laughs> so I have to fill up every four days, and mine is 91, and that's $65. Right. Well, we're, we got 93 down here in Texas. and uh, Yeah, our stupid premium sucks. <laughs> <laughs> our, our, premium, our 91 is actually like 89. Yeah, but <laughs> – Devin, you have any other projects going on right now you want to talk about? Oh, no. Just uh, the Interceptor. I'm trying to find some stuff to do with that. Okay. It's so hard. Like performance parts for it. Everything is OEM cop car parts. and you can do some lights and stuff on it, but I don't want to start pushing that. Uh, yeah. Impersonating a police officer button there so right yeah. well shoot that could be fun <laughs> yeah bottom i love seeing those those bottom uh running board lights that's just state cars. those 
we do like a turn segment with those. That'd be awesome. Uh oh. <laughs> <Seems Brooke. awesome. laughs> <laughs> <Man down. laughs> what about you, Sean? What else you got going Dude, on? I'm trying to get this car straight, and uh, we've got. Omar from Hyperdrive, hopefully going to be on the podcast. Going to be on the podcast next week. That's going to be big. Um, that's going to be very close circuit. Um, no other guests. We're just going to have Omar and us three. Uh, we'll have everything structured, questions and everything like that, and we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it like a real, very structured interview, and uh, that should be good. He was on Hyperdrive. He um, he's very involved. I'm not sure if it's his company, but he's very involved with Ultimate Road Rally. And things of that nature so i'm pretty excited to have him on as a guest and um kind of go from there awesome very cool looking yeah, forward awesome. to it yes sir well i appreciate you guys coming on for a few minutes chatting it up uh we're gonna go ahead and hop off out of here and um i will catch you guys later all right awesome Sweet. thanks sean thanks have a good one Thank you.